Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MatTube. This is lesson number 26 and we are moving forward in differentiation under the integral sign. And we are almost near the end but we are doing long long questions with the help of Leibniz rule. So as always the most important question and point number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's start. So write the question. Um, this has been asked two, three times and it's very important. So please write, evaluate. Please mark it very important, very, 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 very important. So please write, evaluate integral 0 to pi by 2. I, al I already gave the name i. Log of a plus b sin x, the whole divided by a minus b sin x times dx by sin x. Uh, now look at this. I am going to do one thing. I am going to discuss something with you first. In class 12, you might have learned a standard type of definite integral or indefinite integral. 1 by a sin square x plus b cos square x plus c. Remember, this is a standard type and there is a standard procedure. Whenever you meet an integral in this format, the first thing to do is divide each term in the numerator and denominator by cos square x or multiply throughout by sec square x. Both means the same because dividing by cos square x or multiplying by sec square x means the same. And you have to remember the fact sin square into sec square x. If you multiply sin square and sec square x, actually you are creating tan square x. And when you multiply cos square and sec square x, it's kind of like multiplying two enemies, you get one, they cancel each other. And when you multiply some constant into sec square x, you get sec square x. And you must convert it into tan square immediately. Because sec square minus tan square is 1, you can use 1 plus tan square x. Okay. So, point number 1, when you meet this special integral, the standard integral, multiply each term in the numerator and denominator by sec square x. And point number two, make sure the denominator is completely in terms of tan. And point number three, you have to put tan x is equal to t. And there you go, you will be able to integrate. Okay, now second thing. I want you to differentiate log a plus b sin x partially okay i'll put that curly d where is my curly d yeah so i'm going to differentiate this partially with respect to a so i'll get 1 by a plus b sin x it's function of function times 1 plus 0 isn't it at the same time if i do curly d partial derivative with respect to b the same function Again, it is function of a function, chain rule. So, we get 1 by a plus b sin x times, what will you get? Now, b is the hero. So, you are going to get 0 plus sin x is a constant. So, 1 into sin x. Or in other words, you will get something into sin x. Okay, so that is how we start. So look at this. I noticed that there is uh, what you call dx by sin x. And I also notice I can apply the properties of logarithm and I can write this as log a plus b sin x minus log a minus b sin x times dx by sin x. Okay, so as always, I am going to write x is the variable a and b are parameters. 
should I differentiate with respect to A or B? Again, in this problem, I am going to be adamant. I am not going to change my decision. I am not going to differentiate with respect to A. Think about it. In the last video also I asked. If you get the answer, comment below. If you did not get the answer, okay, welcome, you are welcome. You can log into my website www.stmatube.com and ask me. Anyway, I am going to write di by db and that is going to give me you already saw the differentiation 1 by a plus b sin x times sin x i'm not going to explain because you just saw what happened when we differentiate a minus b sin x times it will be minus sin x and outside dx by sin x now this minus and minus will be plus sin x will come common and the sin x will get cancelled okay so many things are taking place so we get di by db equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 yeah 1 by a plus b sin x plus 1 by a minus b sin x dx if you work out by yourself, I'm sure you'll get this answer. So di by db equal to integral 0 to pi by 2. Let's take LCM. What is a minus b into a plus b? It's a square minus b square sin square x. So we get a minus b sin x plus a plus b sin x in the numerator. It gets cancelled, we get 2a, 2a goes outside. So again, a lot of things happening really fast. So 2a goes outside, 0 to pi by 2, a square minus b square sin square x. Okay, in the beginning itself I told you, this is the standard integral, look at the denominator. The denominator consists of sine square and there is no cos square. It's not compulsory. Okay, so what's the method? Okay, multiply throughout by sec square x. I'll repeat. I have explained how to solve this problem in the beginning. This is a standard type. This is nothing new. This is something which you learned in class 12. So you multiply throughout by sec square x. So 1 into sec square x is sec square x. The whole divided by a square into sec square x minus b square into what will happen? I already told you it will be tan square x. Point number 2. Okay, we multiplied. Now point number 2, we have to make sure the denominator is completely in terms of tan. It's not in terms of tan. And we know the fact sec square x is 1 plus tan square x. So, I write di by db equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 sec square x the whole divided by a square 1 plus tan square x minus b square tan square x. Now, point number 3, what should we do next? Yeah, put tan x is equal to t. Now look at this my friends, whenever you make a substitution, uh, you have to remember two things. One is the differential. What's the differential? Sec square x dx equal to dt and that was the plan. That was the plan because I know that if I put tan x equal to t, I'll get the numerator as the differential. Now point number two, these limits belong to x and we are changing to a new variable. So we get t is equal to tan x, isn't it? I'm just reading from right to left, t is equal to tan x. So if x is equal to 0, t will be tan 0, that is 0. If x is equal to pi by 2, t will be tan pi by 2 and that is nothing but infinity. Okay, so I'll try to write here. So we get di by db is equal to integral t is equal to 0 to pi by 2 
I think we forgot someone. Yeah. I'm very good at it. So I had to write this 2A over here. I'll use some other color 2A over here. I hope you're doing this by yourself. Okay. So the numerator becomes DT. The whole divided by A square 1 plus T square minus B square T square. Now let's write that very neatly. DI by D B is equal to integral t is equal to 0 to infinity 1 by a square plus a square t square minus b square t square and that will be 2a in del t equal to 0 to infinity 1 by a square plus uh, t square comes common so we get a square minus b square into t square dt that is di by Look at this, you will understand this only if you are working out the problem along with me. Otherwise, it will be like watching a movie and that won't benefit your mathematical abilities. So, that is t is equal to 0 to infinity. 1 by a square plus root under a square minus b square t, the whole square. I hope you don't mind this step. Okay, I am going to write something which you may or may not agree. I'm going to write, I'm going to change this into my favorite variable x, a square minus b square, x the whole square dt. Is this step okay or not? It is okay. If you don't believe me, you can try to evaluate interval 1 to 2 x square dx or interval 1 to 2 y square dy or into 1 to 2 t square dt. We have discussed about this long back, long, long back when we learned properties of definite integrals. In a definite integral, the variable does not matter. The limit and the function matters. So whether you write x or whether you write t does not matter. And I love to write my problems in x because we had been dealing with problems in x for a long time. By the way, just now I noticed something else. It's an improper integral. It's going to give me more headache. So, di by db is equal to limit t tends to infinity. I have to make it proper integral. t equal to, oops, x is equal to 0 to t 1 by a square plus root under a square minus b square into t, oops, x, the whole square dx. Okay, now time for some serious talk. 1 by 1 plus x square. It's good if you note these things. The integral is tan inverse x plus c. Integral 1 by a square plus x square dx. The integral is 1 by a tan inverse x by a plus c. Integral 1 by a square plus bx the whole square dx. Trust me, the answer is 1 by ab tan inverse bx by a plus c. So, with this knowledge, did you write this? I am going to erase it. Gone. So, we get limit t tends to infinity. Okay, integrate. 1 by a into root under a square minus b square tan inverse root under a square minus b square into x by a within the limits x is equal to 0 to t. I am sure you have never done such long problems in your plus 2 life. Okay, so welcome to the world of engineering first semester students. So now what we do is we plug in this upper value for x. So we get di by db is equal to, this is a constant. So I can keep it outside. By the way, we forgot this 2a again. So I will write this 2a. I will write this 2a. Please correct it. And we get 2a and then this 1 by a root under a square minus b square and limit 
t tends to infinity time to plug in you can plug in the upper limit so we get tan inverse root under a square minus b square t by a minus 0 okay so this a and a will get cancelled so di by db is equal to 2 into 1 by root under a square minus b square and that will be nothing but pi by 2 so we get di by db is equal to pi into 1 by root under a square minus b square again you will need one formula integral 1 by root under a square minus x square dx is sine inverse x by a my friends this is a really 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 long and a difficult problem please make sure you work out the problem again and again and again till you are perfect so look at this I'm going to make it because it's time for the big question what did you find and what are we trying to find so of course um, you know what to do next root under a square minus b square d b so please mind it the variable of integration is b so b is the variable b is like x over here here x is the variable so we get i is equal to pi sine inverse b by a plus c call it equation number one okay now time for the box so i write the question do you still remember the question zero to pi by two log a plus b sine x the whole divided by this bracket is very important if you don't write the bracket properly then the question will be wrong okay now i differentiated with respect to b so i have to think like this putting b is equal to what will give me i equal to zero very simple put b equal to zero because if you put b equal to zero this is gone this is gone so we get log one log one is zero and the whole thing will vanish now let me plug in so i'm going to write by one I have to put 0, I have to put b equal to 0, sin of 0, 0. So, I get c is equal to 0. So, what's the answer? i is equal to sin inverse b by a and there is a pi over here. I was about to miss that pi. Okay, so that's it. That is a really long one. Now, still there are a few important questions left in differentiation under the integral sign. So, we will do that in the next uh, lesson and once that is over, we are going to start with beta gamma integrals. We will meet soon and as always, if you like the video, please subscribe and share with your friends right now. So, we will meet later. So, till then my friends, bye.